Now, team, keep it clean. Y'all knew this was coming, right? Y'all knew as soon as Marcus Peters got released, as soon as it even was said last night that he could possibly be released. You know this was on a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans' mind. Oh, should they bring him back? Should they just reignite the flame that was once there between Marcus Peters and the Baltimore Ravens? And it's funny because when the news broke that he was officially cut, within 60 seconds, I got these three messages. Shout out to my guy, Marcus. He said, I got to say it, Peters back to Baltimore. Oh, my guy, Joshua Williams. He said, Marcus Peters got released. Should the Ravens re-sign him? My guy, David M. He said, Engraven, this is not a drill. As of right now, the Raiders just cut Marcus Peters. If he were to clear waivers, do you think the Ravens would negotiate a contract with him to come back? So, should the Ravens bring back Marcus Peters? Well, um, let's think about it. And, and then we're going to get into why Marcus Peters was even cut in the first place because that's something that we got to think about too. But even before we get there, right now the Ravens secondary, they are in pretty good shape. They really are. You're about to get Marlon Humphrey back after the bye. And you know what? Last night during that Chargers game, I was like, oof, Marlon Humphrey ain't going to play. And then by the way the game was going, I was like, oh, yeah, we missing Marlon Humphrey big time now. But – the Ravens, they made the right decision because they still were able to win. The defense was still able to dominate even without a Marlon Humphrey. So that was really, really nice to see. Um, but anyway, um, the one thing that I really appreciate about the Ravens secondary and then just even their cornerbacks specifically, something that I've seen. And you can, of course, let me know if you agree or disagree, because I really do want to hear from you all about this in the comments. Um, the tackling has been pretty good overall. There have been some times where they miss here and there. But overall this year, in my opinion, the tackling, and not even just from the secondary, but the defense as a whole has been really good. Uh, and it's really been up from the past couple of years. It's been a, a drastic change, in my opinion. And I, I think that's something that cannot go unnoticed. And, and But it's something that we, we, we got to make sure we talk about because it's very important. Because when you tackle well, you stop a play. You stop a play in its tracks. Because if you don't tackle well, a play can go from being a five-yard gain to being a 15, a 20, a 60-yard gain. And us Ravens fans, we know from experience because we've seen it happen plenty of times when it comes to poor tackling. But this year has been so much better. And we remember when Marcus Peters was – when he was with the Baltimore Ravens, even when he was doing his thing, getting all these interceptions, pick sixes and all that, Marcus Peters is he, – he, he is excellent at film study. He is excellent at diagnosing plays and whatnot. He got great instincts. But tackling just it wasn't his thing. And there would be times when we've seen it plenty of times with Marcus Peters. He would make, he would put on his suit, put on that shirt and tie, and he would make some business decisions. Now, we love Marcus Peters. But yeah, I was like, ooh, that, sometimes that would be a little rough right there. So he, he was not the most physical corner. And in every corner is different, but his thing was getting that ball. His thing was making sure that you ain't get the ball. He, his thing was him turning into the wide receiver uh, when he matched up. Um, now, Ravens do play a lot of zone coverage. So that would benefit Marcus Peters because that's his thing. He's not really a man corner like that. He's a zone corner. So he would fit right in with that. Um, but the tackling, that's where I would be a little bit concerned. And then when you look to see why uh, they released Marcus Peters, it said uh, Peters, who's 30 years old, was signed. This is from The Athletic, by the way. He was signed to a one year, three million dollar contract to be a leader in the secondary and did have an interception return for a touchdown in week eight against the Detroit Lions, but has been a huge disappointment. His tackling was poor, including a whiff in the second quarter against the Chiefs and his effort was questioned. Mm. Effort was questioned. That's interesting right there because when you hear stuff like that, that can be really tricky because I know, and speaking from my own personal experience, there's been times when I've been at a job. I've been at a company where I just, I wasn't feeling how they ran things. I wasn't feeling how they did stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm showing up, but I, ain't, I wasn't giving my all. And I knew I wasn't giving my all. And it was clear that I wasn't giving my all. My managers knew that I wasn't giving my all. So we have conversations and whatnot, like, hey, well, what's going on? You're not feeling it. What's the problem? What's the issue? Like, how, how can we fix it? Management changed. Leadership changed. And everything changed for me. And like, I, I really started putting forth way more effort because I saw that things were different. I saw that there was actually a lot more hope uh, than what I had known before under the previous management, under the previous regime. So I wonder, I, I really wonder with Marcus Peters if that could be it. Because with the Baltimore Ravens, um, they're obviously on a different track. 
not even just right now, but even just recently, the way that they do stuff, they're, they're on a much different track than the Raiders are. And I wonder if Marcus Peters being with the Raiders and especially with them just losing loss after loss after loss, I wonder if that messed with his psyche and he's just been like, man, I, I, I just don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. I've been a Raiders fan for my whole life, but this, this move just this didn't work out. And I wonder if he just if he mentally checked out from the Raiders right now. Now, um, and the reason I, I say that it is tricky, too, is because we've heard this about players before, and sometimes they just need a change of scenery. One player I bring up is Jadavian Clowney. Jadavian Clowney, a lot, same, all the same stuff that uh, is being said about Marcus Peters, the lack of effort, um, and just yeah, him whiffing on stuff, him missing stuff. Tackles, I mean. Um, this same stuff, especially when it comes to a effort, it was all said about Jadavian Clowney, too. That he wasn't a leader, that he was overrated, that he was just in it for the money, he wasn't hungry, is this, that, and the so much. You heard so much stuff about Jadavian Clowney and more. Look how he's doing now. Jadavian Clowney, he played with the Texans, he played with the Titans. He played with the Browns. He played with the Seahawks. And when he played with those teams, they weren't really having much success. They weren't all terrible, especially when he was with the Texans or whatnot, but they weren't having this crazy amount of success. He comes to the Baltimore Ravens, especially after, after they haven't been on the Browns for the past couple of years. Comes to the Baltimore Ravens. It was even said that Jadavian Clowney had an attitude because I remember um, last year at one point, it was said that Jadavian Clowney, he was upset because he didn't want to be looked at as the number two guy to Miles Garrett. And I was thinking, oh, like, oh, hold up, man. Like, anybody, any pass rusher that goes over there, you're going to be number two to Miles Garrett. But anyway, um, so after hearing all that stuff, and when the Ravens first started talking to Jadavian Clowney, a lot of people were like, no, no, we don't want him. We heard too much bad stuff about this dude. Look how he's doing now. Jadavian Clowney has been amazing. And what, did, what was all Jadavian Clowney needed? The right situation. The right situation. Now with Marcus Peters, um, that that because that's what I'm thinking that it is, man. I'm thinking it's just one of them things where it just may not be the right situation. It may not be the right fit. Uh, but if he came back to Baltimore, I just I don't feel like there would be a place for him. Like, and, and think about this too. What is Marcus Peters' role? What would his role be with the Baltimore Ravens if he were to come back right now? What, what would it be? Because you got Marlon Humphrey, you got Brandon Stevens, you even got a Ronald Darby, you got Kyle Hamilton playing in the slot, you got your two safeties, Geno Stone, Marcus Williams. Where's Marcus Peters' role going to be? Like, I mean, you, you could bring him back. I mean, you could, what, you going you gonna to put him on a practice squad? You could do that. And have him be like a stay ready so you ain't got to get ready type of thing. It could be one of those sort of emotional, those, those, those sentimental type of deals. Like, we're going to bring you back because we love you. We got a lot of love for you. And you were here uh, with us through a huge transition as we transitioned from one quarterback to the next. Uh, and you were here. We, we traded for you in the middle of the season in 2019. And you made an immediate impact. And you, you were really a big part of everything that we did. That first playoff victory that Lamar Jackson got, you were a huge part of that. And you closed the deal for us with that. But... <clears throat> For me, I, I just don't feel like there's a spot, there's a place for Marcus Peters on the field. Emotionally, there's always a place for Marcus Peters for sure. In our hearts, definitely. But on the field, I, I just don't feel like it would be a good fit. 